It's Mike Lupica of ESPN New York 98.7 on 104.5 The Team with Armin and Levac. And, uh, Mike, we're excited to uh, announce that you are coming to the Capital Region uh, next Thursday, November 13th at 7 o'clock. You're going to be the guest of honor at a uh, reception prior to your talk at 5 o'clock for Mohawk Valley Libraries at Schenectady Community College in Schenectady, New York. We're looking forward to having you here in Schenectady. It's going to be a cool event. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm uh, originally an upstate uh, New York boy. I was born and brought up in Oneida, New York. So uh, this will be a lot of fun. And I'm a, I'm a library uh, kid. I grew up in the stacks of the Oneida Public Library um, reading books and, and, and being the kind of kid that I now attract with my own, uh, with my own books. And, and by the way, uh, you, you know the public's invited and they can purchase tickets, $40 for adults and $20 for young people. And, uh, and there's the, I'm just reading off my sheet here just so people know. <laughs> tickets for the talk and the reception are $80 for adults and $40 for young adults. So it's, it's, these, I do these kind of things um, across the country, obviously, when I have a book out. So they, it'll, it'll be a great night. It, it'll be a lot of fun, and it's a talk that isn't geared to adults or kids. It's geared to everybody who cares about books and reading and sports. I hear you. Yeah, Mohawk Valley Libraries. You can get your tickets at, just email tickets at mvls.info or brownpapertickets.com as well. And again, that is November 13th. Uh, Mike is going to be talking at 5 o'clock at Schenectady Community College. Mike Lupica with Armin in the back on 104.5 The Team. Get your tickets. Email tickets at mvls.info. And it's all about your new book, Mike. We're, uh, we're looking forward about to, to your book, and, and I, need, I need to sit down and read this thing. Tell us about your uh, new book that you have out. Oh, it's, it's, it's called Fantasy League. It's about a 12-year-old boy uh, named Charlie Gaines who's uh, living in Southern California, and he's, uh, he's a fantasy football wizard. And his best friend is the granddaughter of the owner of the old man who's brought football back to L.A. And Charlie makes a couple of suggestions about players, one of which about a quarterback uh, that changes the fortunes of the team. And then the whole world finds out that a 12-year-old kid is kind of calling the shots with an NFL team, even though if you look at the Jets, you would think that there are many 12-year-olds who could call the shots better than the people they have. Um, and it's it's a really, it's a fun, fun story. He's a great character. His relationship with the, the old man is great. It's it's a fun read. Now, it's a it's timely topic as well with teams headed to uh, to L.A. Is there is there any foreshadowing as to what team you think ends up in L.A. if we read the book? Well, you're assuming that they won't take either the Giants or the Jets. Um, no, they probably wouldn't. Um, no, I have no idea. I, you hear the Rams are going back. That would be probably the best story. Nothing against St. Louis. But the Rams returning to L.A. would be kind of cool. Looks like they might have a, a star in the making in Austin Davis, a quarterback. I have no idea. You hear the Jaguars sometime. Um, but it's unbelievable that for 20 years in, in, in the second biggest city in the United States, yeah. they don't have an NFL franchise. You think it's inevitable, Mike, it's going to happen again? It has to. I, I just I can't imagine. Now, I realize, I, I realize they are having trouble building a stadium. I get all that. And I've, I've written for years and years that publicly financed stadiums and arenas are one of the great civic hustles of all time. Because here's what they always tell you. It'll be great for the taxpayers. It's great for one taxpayer when they build these stadiums. The taxpayer who owns the team. And maybe for the taxpayer who's going to build the stadium or the arena. So I get that. I get that it's a hustle. But I, I, I believe that they have to figure it out. They just have to figure it out eventually. Mike Lupico with Armin in the back on 104.5, the team. You're home for New York sports. And uh, Mike will be speaking in the Capital Region Thursday, November 13th, 7 o'clock, or excuse me, at 5 o'clock at Schenectady Community College. He'll be signing his book, Fantasy League, uh, after he speaks. Uh, tickets are very affordable, $40 for adults, half price for young adults, 12 to 17, they're $20. If you want tickets to the talk and reception, $80 and 40, just uh, email tickets at nbls.info, brownpapertickets.com. It all benefits the Mohawk Valley Library Systems. And uh, Mike, you mentioned that you have a heart for the library systems because you grew up in the library. Why is it that you wanted to write about sports? How did you find that love? Oh, you know, I can remember from the time I was 10 and 11 years old, you know, uh, writing my little sports stories. When I got to Bishop Gurdon High School, we moved to New Hampshire when I was 12. I was writing for the school paper. When I got to Boston College, um, 
there were three school papers at the time. I was writing for all of them and working nights at the Boston Globe. I just, my, my passion for sports and my passion for writing, which I was just lucky enough that I was able to combine them. I, when I was a boy, wow. I read stories about this guy, Chip Hilton, written by a legendary basketball coach named Claire B. I like to think that I've sort of um, had a hand in bringing those back, books back. But they were about loyalty and friendship and, and, and teamwork. And those are the things that are, are the heart of my books. I, the, the, the stories change, the kids change, the sports change from book to book. Um, my book in, in February will be about baseball. I just now finished a book about basketball for next year. Jeez. But kids, what I've found as I've gone around the country and found out how much kids love to read is this. There's nothing more important to them other than their families than being known as a good friend. That, that, that is the rock-solid foundation of, of childhood. You want to be known as a good friend, and you want to be able to count on your friend uh, yourself. And that's what my... If you're not a good friend or a good teammate, believe me, you're not going to do very well uh, in my books. I, I started writing these books for uh, young adults 10 years ago with Travel Team because of something that happened in my own life. And my, my, one of my sons got cut for being too small from a travel team. I started a team of my own for all the kids who got cut. It became such a great experience. I wrote a novel about it and the novel changed my life. And now it's 10 years and about 5 million books later. So it's, uh, we'll t I'll tell that story at the library on, on November 13th. And it resonates with adults because they've seen their kids get their hearts broken in sports. And it resonates with kids. Very cool. The reception's at 5 o'clock. The Hill Talk at 7 o'clock. It's Mike Lupico with Armin in the back on 104.5 The Team. All right, Mike, i got to ask you. Monday Night Football happens. We, we think that uh, the Giants are improving, yet they don't look as good as we would hope against Indy. What, what's going on with that team? Well, the Giants are just lucky that they've got the Jets in their universe right now. <laughs> I just don't think they're very good. I mean, I, I couldn't believe. I love Tom Coughlin. I do but I couldn't believe afterwards he said, well, we made some things happen late. Well, if you watch the game, the Colts had stopped playing at 40 to 10. You know, they, they had stopped playing or caring. All of the Giants did was score garbage time points last night. They can't keep their defense off the field. The defense isn't very good. They've gotten injuries, but everybody gets injuries. And they're 3-5 and five now. I, I don't see any avenue for them to make the playoffs. And here's the other thing. They keep talking about themselves like, oh, yeah, but remember when they made that run from 7-7? Seven and seven? This team is so far different from those two Super Bowl teams. And the Giants might be in a position where they're going to miss the playoffs for the fifth time in six years, for the third year in a row. They, they're, this is an amazing resume that Coach Coughlin and Eli have. They have never won a single playoff game in any year other than the Super Bowl years. They had those two magical runs. They've never won a playoff game in any of those other seasons. Mike Levac was over at my house last night, and we, we were watching the Monday Night Football game, and he looked over at me and he said, man, I just have a feeling this could be Tom Coughlin's last year. Do you, do you feel like after this season, how, how realistic is it for Tom Coughlin to say, man, I'm giving it my all and it's just not working anymore. I've had a great career. Oh, I don't think he'll walk away. Okay. I, I don't. I, 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 they're they're going to have to... They're going to have to fire him if they want a new coach next year. But this isn't just on him. This is on this is on the general manager as as, as well. They they have they're, they're just thin at so many different positions, and they want to blame this all on 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 Victor Cruz getting hurt. Come on, I mean, look at all those drop balls last night. Look at how they couldn't cover anybody. Look at how Luck abused them. He did to them what they used to do to other teams. Oh no, I think. I think it, there would be so much more focus on the Giants right now if the Jets weren't the dumpster fire that they've become. You, you bring them up. I, I just feel like I've got to. I've got to give you the the pedestal, the podium, and say, "All right, have at the Jets, Mike." <laughs> well, they have to start over after this year. They need a new general manager. They need a new coach. They need a new quarterback. They need a new offensive coordinator. They need a new defensive coordinator. Uh, to, to reference an old line from Bill Parcells. They don't just have to clean house. They have to burn the carpet as well. Mike Lubica, uh, last question, Mike. Uh, A-Rod, the story coming out that he paid for silence. Is this just going to get dirty all over again now that he's back with the Yankees? 
Oh, he'll find a way to spin it that he was just trying to help out here. I, this is, this is, he is, he's the biggest phony I have ever met covering sports. And the Yankees are just hoping that he comes back, is unable, physically unable to play. They pay him off. Insurance pays 80% and the guy uh, goes away. Um, if, if this guy shamed them. He shamed his sport. He blamed everybody in the world for his problems. I kept saying all those idiots who said it was a witch hunt. Well, what happens if the witches are real? Everything we wrote about him in the Daily News, everything I wrote about him, turned out to be true. And and he was he tried to prevent portray himself as some sort of victim. Shut up, <laughs> not you, him. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it plenty of times too, Mike. I, I got to tell you though, your voice is one of those that I just I just key to sports when yeah. I, when I hear you speaking whether it be on the you know the weekend radio shows or on, or on your show uh, on 987 I just know I'm here in sports and, and I can't help but listen and I just I'm glad I got an opportunity to tell you that oh uh, no thank you so much thank you um, we're all in this together thank you so much for promoting the event and again get people to come out to this it's going to be a great night you got it Thursday November 13th seven o'clock Mike Lupica speaks reception five o'clock beforehand tickets available for both uh, email tickets at mbls.info that's Mohawk Valley Library system all of the money uh, all the benefits go to uh, the Mohawk Valley Library system again Mike Lupica his show we are your home for New York sports Mike, and you have a New York sports content show from 1 to 3 on ESPN New York. We think it's great, and we love you for your time today, man. Thank you so much. Oh, no. Thank you guys for your time. Talk to you soon.